From downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Shut down, showdown. Maybe not, though, at the debate looms. Reports say that President Trump is working to pave the way for an agreement to prevent a government shutdown. Jason? A promising teenager murdered. What his best friend said to him as he lied dying in his arms. And breaking news this noon out of Berkeley, a short day for school there. A threat leads to an evacuation and now a search for answers. Thank you so much for joining us this noon. That does top our news. You are looking at video. This is video from that school in Berkeley. That's where school officials are saying that a bomb threat was phoned in from New York. It was left as a voicemail on the school's phone line. Students were sent home after receiving the threat. The investigation into the phone call continues as police try to identify the caller. A second person has been arrested in the murder of a 17 year old Roseville High School student in Warren. Yesterday, we know there had been lots of fighting on Page Avenue in Warren where this all unfolded. Let's get to Jason Colthorpe following this story for us and the sad outcome that this 17 year old died from his injuries. Just awful, Rhonda, because his friends say he was an innocent victim. There has been a lot of fighting on that street, but the fight that led to this shooting didn't involve 17 year old Kenny Cutts. As we say, his friends say he was caught in the middle of a beef between two other groups. Kenneth Cuts was a star football player at Roseville High School. Oddly enough, it was a basketball game that he wasn't even involved in that led to his death. His friend Cedric Smith Cole says he got into a fight after a game on Page Avenue Sunday. On Monday, when Kenny was walking up to meet him on that street, those other guys showed back up this time with a gun, and after a scuffle, they shot him in the neck. Kenny fell, and as the shooter ran off, Cedric tried to save his friend. I was helping him back here, trying to put the tiles on his neck, you know, stop the wounds, but it was too much blood. Did the ambulance show up or? They, they took too long. They took too long. I mean, are you telling me that he died in your arms? Mom, in my hand, he was squeezing my hand. I told him, like, if you die, bro, I love you. And I started squeezing his hand. And he was squeezing my hand. And he died. They were best friends since second grade. And the moments before that, when there was this encounter with the gun, that whole scuffle almost as dramatic as what you just heard. We're going to let you hear that coming up on Local 4 News at 5. Rhonda. Oh, Jason, just heartbreaking. And do we still have Jason? I did have a question for him about what's next for those suspects. Are we able to ask him that? All right. Well, we will have much more, of course, on this very sad story for you. Um, Jason, are you still there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Rhonda? I'm I, yes, Jason, I'm sorry about that. We lost the connection. I can hear you. Are you able to yep, hear me? I um, yes, just I as can. far as these two suspects that are now in custody, what's next for them? Uh, there's two suspects, uh, as police explained it to me. One of them has been arrested for the murder. He should be arraigned tomorrow, 1 o'clock. We'll right. be there for that. Okay, Jason, thank you. And certainly our thoughts and prayers are with his friends and, of course, his family at this difficult time. Meanwhile, Ike Smith is entering day two of his trial, accused of sexually assaulting women all over Metro Detroit in crimes dating all the way back to 2011. Smith is charged with first degree and second degree criminal sexual conduct, home invasion and assault. The cases originate in Allen Park, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Inkster and Redford Township. If found guilty on all charges, Smith could be sentenced to life in prison. Proceedings are ongoing, so stay with Local 4 for the very latest on what's unfolding there in the courtroom. Students and Michigan State University at Michigan State, I should say, have been alerted about a rape that took place on campus last week. University police report a sexual assault took place shortly after one in the morning last Friday near Beaumont Tower. If you're familiar with the MSU campus, police described the suspect as a white male in his early 20s with short brown hair and brown eyes. The suspect remains at large. 
President Trump approaches the milestone of his first 100 days in office, there are reports that he is helping pave the way for an agreement to prevent a government shutdown by the end of this week. Congress faces a Saturday deadline to come up with a new budget or at least a temporary spending plan or parts of the government could shut down and run out of money. Prospects of an agreement have been threatened by the president's demand for spending on a border wall in Mexico, but now that the president appears to be willing to do at least to delay that part of the plan. Republican leaders are also hoping to come up with a new health care reform bill. And you are looking live at the Capitol right now. Actually, President Donald Trump just spoke at a memorial event for the Holocaust. Among his remarks, the president said that his administration would prioritize fighting anti-Semitism in the nation. Also in Washington, the Senate Judiciary Committee has announced that it will hold hearings early next month on reports of Russian meddling in last year's presidential election. Scheduled to testify on May 8th will be former National Intelligence Director James Clapper and former Acting Attorney General Sally Yates. Iran met with the U.S. and other world powers in Vienna, Austria today. It was to discuss the ongoing implementation of the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. The meeting comes as uncertainty grows about the agreement's future under, Don or under President Donald Trump. The deal saw Tehran drastically curb its nuclear activities in return for the lifting of sanctions. Last week, President Trump ordered a review of the deal, which could lead to a discussion to get rid of it altogether. South Korea says North Korea held major live, wa live fire drills today to mark the anniversary of its military's founding. The exercise took place at a U.S. guided missile submarine arrived in South Korea and envoys from the U.S., Japan and South Korea met in Tokyo to discuss the growing threat posed by North Korea's nuclear weapons and missiles program. U.S. officials are telling defense officials are telling NBC News that they believe that North Korea is gearing up for a show of force today or tomorrow. Let's get over to Brandon and talk about kind of the end to our sunny, nice weather. Things have gotten a bit cloudier around here. Will we be seeing the sunshine again today or is that it for a little bit? You can almost see the clouds thinning out a little bit out there, which is great news. Tomorrow we're going to get back into the sun. Whew, temperatures going way up, but with the clouds still 61, 62, 63 is our climatological average or where we average for end of April high temperatures. Southeast winds are at nine miles an hour, so that is trying to pump a little moisture out of Lake Erie. And we have had some showers through southern Ontario and extreme eastern side of uh, the, the U.S. side of our viewing area here. 60 degrees right now on average, 65 at 2 p.m. and at 4 o'clock right around 70 degrees. And it sort of will rely on at least partly sunny skies heading into the afternoon hours. And this evening it's the Mariners and the Tigers, a good one. 7-10 first pitch. Temperatures will be falling through the 60s, Rhonda, like jacket weather tonight. All right, Brandon, thank you. Little Caesars Arena here in downtown Detroit is still under construction, but another big sports event was just announced earlier today. The head coaches of the University of Michigan, Michigan State, Oakland University, and Detroit Mercy all gathered together at the arena site today to talk about plans for a double header basketball game on Saturday, December 16th. It's being called a celebration of basketball in Michigan. Tickets and game times will be announced at a future date but the University of Michigan will be taking on Detroit Mercy and Michigan State will be taking on Oakland University. Definitely a hot ticket that you'll want to get. Still to come, the Rocket Man is slowing down for a bit Why Sir Elton John had to cancel a string of concerts. Plus, Hack Attack reports of an attack on candidates in the French presidential election surface. How this parallels with hacks that happen right here in the U.S. Free money, no gimmicks, no kidding. Okay, I know I've got your attention. Coming up today at 4 on First at 4, I'm going to take you to a local school district where every single child, every student gets free money in a checking account to start their savings account for higher education. All true, all real, all today at 4 on First at 4.
and back to the breaking news that we first brought you at the top of this hour from Berkeley High School. Students were sent home following a bomb threat made by phone to the school. It was called in from a number out of New York and a voicemail was left with that bomb threat. An investigation into the phone call is underway as police try to identify the caller. And take a look at this mess that we are watching. Breaking news out of Detroit's west side. A concrete truck has overturned involved in an accident along the ramp of I-96 and Grand River on Detroit's west side. This is a live look at the scene. No word on any injuries, but the I-96 ramp at Grand River is closed as crews work to get that, that back up on its wheels and off the road. We'll be right back. My wife was... The state of Arkansas executed two convicted murderers last night, three hours apart. The state expedited its schedule of executions as it faces a deadline this Sunday when its supply of one lethal injection drug expires. But the state says that it's not in a rush to carry out the executions. I think it's important, though, as media to know that this is by no means a race uh, and that ADC staff did exactly what ADC staff was trained to do and that is to cautiously and carefully uh, carry out the responsibility they've been uh, um, uh, met to accomplish. So again, keep that in mind. Death penalty opponents staged a silent protest outside of the prison where the executions occurred. Jack Jones was put to death for raping and murdering Mary Phillips. Her family reacted to his execution. I'm glad it's done. I'm, I'm glad that that Part of my life is um, that chapter is closed. I hope the state of Arkansas and the government and the court system learns from this. It don't take 22 years to get something done. The state of Arkansas originally planned eight executions over an 11 day period, but courts blocked four of those executions. One more inmate is due to be put to death on Thursday. Today, it was reported that one of the final two contenders of the French presidential election may have been hacked. A Japanese cybersecurity forum tasked with assessing candidates' security reports that the campaign was breached by a hacker group, according to the firm. The methods used were similar to those used against the Democratic National Committee, you may remember, back here in the U.S. The campaign itself has not confirmed whether or not it was hacked. There is news today regarding the health of iconic musician and singer Elton John, also known as Sir Elton John. And he has been forced to cancel a series of concerts in Las Vegas after being hospitalized for treatment of a rare infection. Elton John contracted the infection during a recent tour of South Africa and it had, had to spend a couple of nights in intensive care because of this infection. He's now recovering at home, so we wish him a full recovery. So to come here on your Tuesday, they're, well, they're not your average egg rolls, um, not your average restaurant for that matter. Ahead in Tasty Tuesday, the food fusion that's been around Detroit for nearly 40 years. And somehow, Brandon, a lot of us didn't even know about it. Several locations, too, and I had never heard of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, we are tracking some flooding rain problems on the East Coast. And out West, we're looking at snow in the Rockies, but not for us. 80 degrees on tap coming your way next. Suburban. Welcome back, everybody. Well, take a look at this. Uh, pretty tough for the folks down south with the heavy rain throughout central North Carolina that's been really spreading some flooding down there. Slow moving system there. As much as five inches of rain has fallen in the Raleigh area since Sunday, and another inch or so expected today. Four inches fell at the Raleigh Durham International Airport on Sunday, setting a state record for the most rain in a single day. As the rainwater begins to drain, rivers in the region are expected to flood later this week. So it is still raining there and the problem will get worse before it gets better. So we uh, in our thoughts and prayers for our friends in the mid-Atlantic region, and some of that is heading up the coast into New England. Here is a look back here at home, and again, the clouds are starting to thin out a little bit, and certainly the farther west you go, the thinner they get. 61 degrees at Metro Airport in our metro zone, 59 Ann Arbor, west zone. Nor uh, north zone includes Pontiac, M59 north, 59 degrees, 60 degrees in Adrian, 
in our south zone. We should be flirting with 70 degrees. It does depend on the cloud cover thinning enough to get some hazy sunshine. We have had some spotty light showers extreme east side. Uh, but a lot of that is waning and that's good means it's uh, kind of going away and this evening if you have tickets for the Tigers, I think it's uh, King Felix is uh, in town. So a good chance to see a great pitching matchup tonight and dry conditions. I would suggest a, a sweatshirt or a light jacket. I'm not telling you what to do, but falling back down through the 60s and these east southeast winds just means it is a little or feels a little cooler on the east side. So 50 53 degrees overnight becoming partly cloudy. Here's a current look at what's happening out there. We mentioned a couple of showers up in St. Clair, Sanilac County, parts of southern Ontario as you head over toward London, still have some light showers, but even there are starting to see the conditions improving here over the next couple of hours. There is the slow moving system that is just coming up through the Carolinas uh, and we will see more and more sunshine tomorrow and that means with this warm air mass in place, a good shot at upper 70s and low 80s. Uh, on Thursday, we do expect some showers. This could be late Wednesday night into early Thursday. I don't know what happened to the seven day. All right, so uh, severe weather alert that is tomorrow. So we have a severe weather radio day going on at the Meyer in Westland, and we will see you there from 11 a.m. to 7. Myself, Ben Bailey, will be there. And uh, Duracell Batteries teaming up with Midland Radio. So you can get free batteries, get a discount on the radio, and the professionals are there to set them up specifically for you. It's a family business and it's a family that believes in Detroit. They have planted several of their specialty restaurants all around the D. They serve Asian corned beef with a beautiful blend of classic food staples. Asian corned beef took its time to perfect its craft and rise to the top. Kim and her son Hassan White started in 1980 and now have five locations around Detroit. We got the traditional corned beef sandwiches that's on onion roll and rye. 16 ounces of hand seasoned and sliced top notch corned beef from the steamer and stacked up. Then back in the steamer, melting to perfection. The Asian corned beef part makes sense when you see the amazing menu of egg rolls. That's wrapped in the oriental egg roll skin with Swiss cheese and corned beef. You gotta try those, those are the delicious. Chicken egg roll, pastrami egg roll, turkey egg roll. Egg rolls with shrimp, with steak, ground beef, with cheese or without. Corned beef may be how their bread is buttered, but you can get shrimp, chicken, pastrami, you name it. And it's all prepared by mom, putting in 14 hour days for 45 years now. I put my whole soul in what I'm doing. I love to cook, period. We prepare this from scratch. Uh, if you come and try one, you'll see the difference um, in our competition. Tasty Tuesday special Asian corned beef offering two egg roll meal, which includes fries and a drink for $5.99. Just need to mention Tasty Tuesday. There are five locations around the city of Detroit, Rhonda. Oh, it is definitely worth stopping in. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Cute story out of San Antonio, Texas, where a police officer was responding to a noise complaint, but then did something a little unexpected. Hmm. <laughs> oh, a little dance club holding a backyard dance off, so the police officer got involved. He sure did, but eventually had to shut the